good time to be alive. Uh, so let me, uh, let's kick off today. I'm going to get into chat GPT. Again, I spend $20 a month for this. Uh, I think it's the, it's the best $20 I've ever spent. I was doing some calculations this morning. 20 bucks a month for GPT is like five um, Starbucks coffees a month. I don't drink Starbucks. I make my own. So uh, I think it's a fair trade-off. Um, but not everybody agrees. And that's perfectly fine. And as you can see here on the left, I've had this is where I was doing stuff with Excel shortcut keys today, this morning, then recorded it. So you spend you $20 uh, and you get things to, you don't have, you don't get throttled as much. I don't think you get throttled at all, at all anymore for $20 a month. Um, you don't have, so people who have the free version of GPT, they will come on and sometimes it says we're having high volume, so you're gonna have to wait. I don't wait. Uh, I get to play with this as fluently and as freely as I like. Um, and when you do pay the $20, if you come down here to the three ellipses on the bottom left, you can go into settings and beta, you go into the beta features, and you can enable things like advanced data analysis, which is what we'll talk about, formerly known as code interpreter. And you can also turn on plugins. We won't cover any plugins today. I think I did that in the last video. Um, that's also another really cool bunch of cool things to do. Um, so as I get started here, one of the things I was thinking about is you really have to come to, I believe when you come to GPT, it's not a, you have to kind of change your mindset. You need, it's not a Google search engine, right? So we're not doing keyword searches here. This is a conversational model. Um, in, in search engines, you type in what you want, you get a list of links. Here you type in what certain thing you ask questions or you phrase things or you, you know, sometimes I type paragraphs in uh, and I get answers rather than links. So it's a it's a different kind of a mindset. And um, if you come into it with like, oh, I'm going to come in here and say, create me the coolest, slickest piece of software, ABCD, um, the probability is you're not going to get what you want. So that's the unfortunate part of the hype around AI. Um, but when you can start to dial in on, and I'm not sure quite sure how to communicate it, uh, like when you can dial in on what this thing can do, um, then you're going to have a much better experience and you're going to get a lot out of it. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I like doing these like once a week. So if you have questions, uh, feel free to type them in the chat. Um, I'll keep an eye on that. Happy to have this be interactive as, as, as much as you'd like. Um, more interactive, the better. So what I'm going to look at today is I'm going to go in and I'm going to turn on the advanced data analysis. And what I want to do, the other funny thing is, is that we'll see how if this goes off the rails, because um, sometimes it does. I'll do I, I'll maybe try something out beforehand or like during the week and I'll come back in here and I'll try it during the presentation and it doesn't work. So hopefully that won't be the case today. And if it does, we'll learn from that. Again, I'm doing all this because I'm building my intuition and I'm hope, hopefully you're getting a sense of what you can do and what you can't do. So now that I've turned on the advanced data analysis, what I, I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna, I, so let's go back. So when you, if you don't have the analysis, analysis on, notice on the bottom in the send message, there's nothing. Keep an eye on the send message now as I switch over to advanced data analysis. I can actually click the button and I can upload files into GPT, okay? And I'm going to upload this bar chart and let's see. So I saw this on the, um, I saw this on Twitter the other day. There's a guy who wrote a book about Python and, and pandas. PD is pandas. That's a package inside of uh, Python. It's um, quite impressive. Uh, it's almost like pivot tables in code, except it's more, you can do tons and tons of things. That's a four hour presentation to itself. Anyway, so what it's basically doing is setting up a map with an with array. So basically you can name it city. There's a bunch of cities that it names Uber. I don't remember what that is. Maybe those are, I don't remember what that relates to and personal car, which cars that are related to that particular Uber instance. Um, so I looked at that and I was like, I think he did it some graphs on it. I was like, oh, I wonder if, what if I upload that into um, GPT and uh, let, let's ask some questions. So I like to keep this really simple. Again, I look at GPT as being a really smart intern. 
a little naive, needs some nudging, needs some direction, right? So if you hire some folks, some PhD interns for you, you know, in your company, and they're learning the ropes of the company and what you do, and they want to take their careers further, not that GPT is going to take their career further, but it might, uh, maybe even to take my job, but there are a very smart intern that's read everything in the world. And with uh, proper nudging and whatnot, you can get some really interesting results. So I just loaded up a PNG file and I'll just gonna type in, let's go and keep it really easy and simple. See what it, what it says. What do I want to do with it? Let's say, let's look at it. See if it does anything good. So it starts working. So this is actually, it's loading up a Python interpreter. So it's writing a Python program and I can see that it's uh, going to import a couple of libraries for image and display and it's opening up the image and in fact it opened the image and it's showing me here's the image what's next on the agenda let me I'm going to just type let's see if I can say let's do a graph now this may be not may not be something that you do every day we'll show what kind of graph let's go with a line so this may not be something you would do day to day, but this kind of gives you a sense of like how deep this can go um, and how you can prompt it to do things around lots of different ideas. And uh, you'd be surprised. I use this every day, multiple times a day to do lots of different things that are part of what my work is as well as my exploration. So it came back and said, all right, do you have specific data you want to plot? from the image please let's see what it does so it's from i'm being vague uh let's see this is a bit of a challenge but definitely doable here are some ways to tackle it i want to do image processing i could have just typed i've done this with other images and i do things like i type in ocr and it's off to the races um so it's doing some stuff it's looking at the image finding contours, I don't know why. Um, so I may want to, may end up start restarting all of this, we'll see. Sometimes GPT is helpful, sometimes it goes off the rails, and this may be one of those times. I also didn't ask ask it to please do this, so it might be in a, not the, one of the best moods. I find that saying please and thank you is, guides some of the pieces. So it looks like, um, it actually took the image itself uh, and did analysis on the image. Um, let's let's do this. Let's try and get it back on track and say, no, please OCR the image. Now, if this doesn't start producing what I'd like, I'm going to start a new chat and uh, we'll see. There you go. So OCR the image and in how long did that take so i went off on the rails i was i was playing around with uh, ambiguous minimal effort prompts which didn't yield a result that i wanted as soon as i told the ocr it pulled it out in a matter of seconds and it actually shows me what was in in, in the code um now i'm going to say let's graph that let's graph so i've actually taken an image now imagine if i looked at a bunch of images or i found images on whatever sources that I have. I could be in a PDF. I can copy out the image. It could be on social networks. It could be somebody sent it to me in an email. It could send me a piece of code, send me a list of numbers. Um, and there we go. So let's do a bar chart. I'll just type in bar chart. So now I know the particular libraries that it's using to, to graph all the stuff, right? So I know it's using pandas and I know it's using the plotlib, probably matplotlib, maybe seaborn. I don't have to worry about knowing how to do titles, labels, legends, um, you know, how to index into a data frame. I can just ask basic questions. And there we go. Now I have a bar chart. Uh, so there's an Uber versus a personal car. That's what the data was. Um, I'm already off to the races trying to understand this. And what if I don't like those colors? Change the colors, please. Have some manners with GPT. Let's see what we get. And now I'm gonna let it choose the color, so that might be not the best idea. Uh, and it goes back and it writes the program again. Um, 
we got some ticks, legends, and then it does a show. And that might, so that's pretty slick. What's really cool is I could actually, which I won't do, is I can actually sit here and say, okay, consolidate all that Python into a single Python script, uh, including the data, and make it so I can download it. And then I would actually be able to download it um, and run it locally on my machine. So again, you know, maybe somebody uh, sends information to you in different ways and they or they forget to send you the, the details and uh, this is a potentially of a way to unlock what's going on in there so um, let's see and just as a last piece we'll do uh, make a slope oops a nice misspelled slope so let's see if it can correct my spelling and figure out what I really wanted so, you know, if I was trying to program this, I'd still be on the first set of steps of just pulling the data. Um, okay, so it just gave me the answer. So I figured out from the spelling, spelling mistake what I wanted and it gave me some details on that, that, that data. Um, so I'd still be programming, you know, trying to great, either OCRing it or trying to find the libraries or pip installs or depending on the language I was using, I have to find out where all the packages were or know about which packages to use to do that. Um, I don't even have to know that this is working in Python and it pulls into proper libraries, it even pulls in SciPy stats for line regression. So um, I think that's pretty cool. But then again, I'm easily uh, stunned. Uh, so any questions so far? I'm gonna go and do one more example, which is, uh, I think will be fun. Um, hopefully it'll happen and won't go off the rails too far. If you got questions or thoughts or it's something you'd like me to ask or, you know, maybe go down a different rabbit hole, let me know. Uh, let's go, let's move on.